Right, so, uh, so when do you start Fatec? Fatec, um, basically we, we started importing touch monitors by um, end of 2005. And in 2006, we had already quite um, um, some, some good distributors in Germany, like um, ELV and Reichelt. Um, but uh, but we, we still, let's say, were in direct competition because we sold under our own name and we sold with this name um, over them. So um, by 2008, we, we decided that we make our own brand and we, we um, decided on Fatec. And um, uh, this is uh, what happened. So the brand Fatec started by 2008. And... Um, now it's how long? Five years. We we yeah, we, we push of, for officially. yeah. We push for the brand um, for for five years. Five years. So what did you do before? Before that. I uh, let's start with myself, huh? You can say also some. But, um, I I, I started. To, <laughs> I started 2001, doing media centers. Um, so the idea to have a television um, with uh, you can record where you can watch your DVDs, Blu-rays. Um, um, videos, mu movies, music, photos, surf the internet, but it was a crazy time. It was uh, every half a year the complete market was changing, the, the standards were changing, and it, it was a fight against windmills, easily said. You can say we had um, developers in Romania and we, we could never do the product uh, finish, and um, that's uh, what we said. We, we, by 2006, we switched and, and started concentrating on touch monitors. And that's my, my, my life before Fatec. Okay, can you talk a little bit about the... So, you were doing a media player business for how long? Five years we, Five we, years? we did this. And we had some prominent um, OEMs, like um, for Hirschmann, for, for Rolleye, for, for Wheeler. Um, so, so we, we were in direct co uh, competition with, with Siemens. But what's that? It was really... I, I started this directly after um, university. Easy said, a far too huge project with far too less money, and it was it was uh, a fight which we which we had to do. Yeah. So huge project. What was it? Linux. We, we had our own uh, Linux um, uh, Linux software. I, I can still um, uh, give the open source to anybody who wants. Um, um, so I, I I kept the source once I wanted to make an open source project out of it. But okay. No, no time for no time for the yeah, other story. Are you a, a Linux hacker? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I would like to be. I, I, I was just a, the guy um, who, who built up his own PCs uh, in free time, then started to do PCs for friends, make small installations uh, while being in school and university for for companies and yeah, things like this. All right. So uh, you're here in Shenzhen. Uh, so can you talk about Shenzhen? What? what how does it work? Uh, oh, I think it's maybe the topic for you because you are foreigner and you know something different for you. Um, we, we, we went in um, 2008 to, to, to China. Basically, I wanted to go 2006 already, but my wife didn't want to have the chaotic Chinese uh, companies working for. You, you can say in your words some, some words. No, don't. No. <laughs> she, she's just listening to this. No. How about Shenzhen? <laughs> Yeah. What do you think about Shenzhen? We, we went 2008 to, to China because we wanted to improve the quality of the touch monitors we imported at uh, that time. And um, it's, Shenzhen is a crazy city. I, I, it's, it's like heaven and hell. Um, um, we are always afraid about um, health, uh, like um, food quality, like um, the pollution you have everywhere. But on the other side, I mean, you had pollution in the 70s in Germany as well, and um, I, I, I hope the Chinese government is, is able to improve that. The city itself is crazy. You, you have, uh, I mean, a modern city with all its life, like in New York or um, any other, Hong Kong, any other big cities in the world. Um, but, but you have um, the, the beach. Within half an hour, you are, you have, you are really at nice beaches, what, what we really do with our children on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same from where we are staying here now, in half an hour, you are in the mountains where, again, the children can play in, in the mud and uh, we, we swim in, in lakes uh, in the mountains where nobody is. Like, you feel like you're in the nature and there is no big city around. So, so it's, a, it's a fantastic place. And um, for sure, he, the city is full of young people. So, so you have a, a high energy and, and people come here for working. And, and uh, it's a strong spirit of working, building, building up things and do something. It's like a crazy business city, right? I think that's a good... good. And the technology. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, Shenzhen is young, but really is a high tech uh, city compared with Peking or Shanghai. So yes, for us it's the right place right, to be. Right place. So could you talk about the quality control with Chinese companies working with suppliers? How does that? Is it challenge or not? We, we, uh, okay, we came 2008 here really, we didn't think at all about building up our own company. Uh, easily said, we, we thought about, okay, we go a little bit to China, improve a little bit the quality and enjoy our life with a housekeeper and because we have young children and, and uh, who helps us living, easily said. But um, after, after a year, we really had every stereotype fulfilled, easily said, what you have about uh, China. And it, it's really the problem is uh, the understanding of, of quality and the knowledge, um, uh, which, which is often uh, missing in, in the companies. And that's uh, why we said, okay, after, after one year staying in China, we visited over 40 factories. Um, I think we visited every touch monitor manufacturer in China at that, uh, that, uh, that time. And um, we decided that we do it for ourselves and uh, that, that, uh, that we, we keep the quality control in, in our hands and that, uh, that we can overlook it. Um, it. It was from the beginning far more uh, difficult than, than we thought, but, um, and that's definitely also a great thing of my wife who, who set up the complete organization. Um, we have a complete ERP system, which, which she knows um, perfect, an open source program, Xtupl, where we now have a standard license. And um, we, we have set up a good quality control and with the ISO certification, I think this year, we, uh, for us, we can say the three years crazy factory build up in, in China is, is, is at an end and um, also quite a hard time. <laughs> so uh, you have a system for component management or how, how does that work? Like, uh, you have something specific about that? We have first, let's say, we have really everything in an ERP system. So we, we now, for, for now one and a half year, in, in every production we had, which parts were used from, from which supplier. And um, that, that's for sure already important. And then we have also um, on, on customer side, um, in, in Europe, for example, we, we offer a portal. And every defect which happens in Europe um, for also now one and a half year, is, is measured is, and analyzed. So we know about every defect wh which happened um, with our products the last two years. And that's a complete cycle. So, so we steadily check, we, we analyze, and, and for sure see that, uh, that we get uh, every day better. Uh, I mean, that's uh, the, w what we are working on. So what's your plan for the future? <sighs> to have more time for the family? <laughs> No, no. Maybe yeah, double, double, double income, huh? So, so we we are still just at the start. Let's say we had mm. the three years um, factory build up, and I think that we really did now. And now, now it's it, it, we really have to grab on the market share. Um, th there is the the unique chance that we, we know in China with the um, knowledge we have what, what customers around the world want and what quality they want, especially for the Western world. And I, I think we are the right guys to, to realize this in China, to, to do the right quality. And um, so, so we have an advantage against other companies in China. We have a price advantage against companies like in Taiwan or US or Germany because for sure we can produce here far, at, at far lower cost than, than anybody, anywhere else in the world. And, and so, yeah, we, we grew the last seven years every year by 50% in our business. And you, you saw Frank, we have now a um, foreign um, um, sales expert. And what we so far didn't have, we, we, we didn't have any sales expert, as I said. So we hope that uh, with the quality and, and products and people we have, we, we can speed up our growth. So these products are, Kind of, uh, you would say industrial, uh, uh, like uh, this is this is industrial use. So, what's the difference between doing consumer stuff and doing stuff like this? So, do you want to go a little bit consumer kind of or not no, really? No. We, we wanted to go to the industry. <laughs> I, I always make the joke, um, you, you put on an industrial PC a serial port and you can sell it for the double price. No, it, it, it's not like this, but for, for industrial, it's, uh, and that's it, um, uh, that's important. For a smaller company, um, for sure we can't compete with somebody like Samsung or with uh, Acer or, or MSI who produces in one spot 100,000 products. We would be crazy when we would try. But what we can do is that we um, um, listen to our customers and that we make a, a perfect tailored product for, for, for what, what he needs. 
And um, for that, for sure, there are investments. Like, say, he uses it as, like, for example, the company in his exercise machines. So they want to have for two, three years it's the same parts, the same components. And that's industrial, that you, that you make a reliable design, um, long-term available. Not that you can sell it now in quantities and who knows what is in half a year but that you plan the products and components so that it's for three, four years available. And for sure then, from what, what you see directly between industrial and consumer is that the industrial has more connections. Like there is still a lot of serial ports needed, uh, there's a digital input output, there are special cable manufacturers, uh, integrations, and that's what we are good in, uh, that, that we tailor a product and, and uh, give it to the customer. And that market has huge potential for lots of things to happen in the future. Definitely, definitely. It's, um, a, a touch is now everywhere. It, it, it starts and it, it's going to be more and more. I mean, it starts to be in the restaurants, you have it in the supermarkets. We had, for example, in Germany, more than 700 supermarkets installed with a kiosk where we put the technique. You go in, you, you can check for the receipt of the day, print it out and go in the supermarket shopping for, for, for the parts of it. I, I mean, uh, there are parts. Or, um, like in, in, we have now in, in um, hotels installations of, of, of kiosks where um, the, the people get information about the hotel or, or then very easy as, as uh, supervising monitors in, in for example Siemens windmills they, they, they steer and check uh, how, how is the windmill running we have um, the 8 inch um, in, in, um, um, with, with Cromwell in self food machines where they, the customer chooses which, um, which um, food he wants and, and get it, gets it out. Um, there are so many applications. One of our biggest customers is uh, <laughs> crazy. He makes, um, how to say in English, um, block heat um, uh, plans for, for smaller houses, let's say, or let's say multi-family houses. And now in this block heat power plan, he integrates our touch monitor for, for steering, the, the regulating the heat in the house. So, so it's, it's really getting everywhere. Or what's said in t uh, police cars in Tunisia, in Brazil we have over 700 police cars running with our 10.4 inch touch PC. Um, we are now working on a locomotive to, to make a, a complete locomotive steered by a touch PC and that's basically one of the most complex products we did so far. And uh, I mean, uh, just, just uh, uh, this is, is a quantity about 12,000 locomotives who should be uh, inserted with, uh, with PC. So the market is huge. So there's that's restaurants, it. there's shops, there's sports places, there's... Machine. Machine. Big, big, huge machine. I mean, the typical machine. machine right now is often with, with buttons or, or even uh, some, some, some steerings. And, and uh, they, they have a very low processor power, and this is now for sure all changing. So, so in, in large CNC cutout machines, there are now PCs in, in, uh, yeah, in, in every, every machine, basically. Um, uh, is, is it in another hospital? Uh, hospital we, we have a hospital yes. project, very interesting in Germany. One, one big company out of the packaging industry put on every working place on the assembly line uh, a 15 inch touch PC from us, where, where now the, the people, each, each working place, uh, sees on the 15 inch touch PC what he has to do. He can change, can, can zoom in. And, and uh, so, so especially in Germany, it's a complete automatization is going with it. Boats, we, we have now, <laughs> with our IP65 high brightness line, we have now boat manufacturers uh, who started integrated. It's very funny, we have one who puts two, uh, again, a 15 inch high brightness in, in a boat and, and use it as, as navigation. Mm. The people are more creative than, 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 than we know or we, uh, we can imagine. They're like, give us a screen, we need, we need, we need that they have some crazy app and it just works. <laughs> Often it not just works, but uh, we, we, we do our best that, that at the end uh, it, it's like this. Yeah. And uh, so, so people can trust you differently than doing business with others, for example, in Shenzhen? For sure, you shouldn't say, uh, shouldn't say any bad thing about others, but um, for, for definitely for us, um, and we, we, we trust us now for more than 10 years already. And, uh, it's, uh, we, st we, we want to, to um, um, stay to our um, words and um, yeah. 
also uh, the, the, the market is, is small. You, you meet everywhere the same people. I mean, you, you know it. You are on every fair, right? You, you know slowly all the persons who are there. I mean, it's, it's the people who, who are really doing or changing the market that it's not so many. And when you start once doing something wrong, for sure they know it. it it's just one example. I still have projects from 2006 from um, resellers, um, um, the customers of my resellers, um, I still make projects for since 2006 and I now handle directly the business and just the invoices comes from the old uh, distribution partner and, and often the, the end customers, hey please, wh wh why I can't buy from you? But, but I, I mean we, we grow with these guys, we, we grow with the sellers and, and so, so we, we, we stand for our word and, and uh, that's not going to happen that we, that we break that.